I'm told you guys are going to be the administrators of your equipment management account. I'm Robin Blanford, CEO and founder of D4H, and this is just a quick welcome to the course. You guys are up for the hard task of getting all that equipment in, configured and set, and our team are going to step you right through that. You have two options, either jump chapter to chapter, skip ahead and see what interests you, or you're welcome to sit back and enjoy the whole course, start to finish. I do hope to see you uh, sometime, meet you in person or online. So looking forward to talking then. In the meantime, enjoy the course. Hello, and welcome to this video series for admin users. My name is Marie Hunt. I'm with the customers team here at D4H. In this video, we're gonna review how to add members to your D4H account, as well as how to send invitations to those users to grant them access to sign in. Let's get started. Once you're logged in to D4H, either access the planning dropdown and go to members or click on the user icon at the top right hand corner and select access control. Either one of these avenues will allow you to add members to your D4H account. To do so, simply click on add members at the top right. There are several ways to add members to your D4H account. You can do so by entering their data in line by line or you can select Upload Spreadsheet to upload a spreadsheet for your members. Be sure to check out the Help Center article for steps on how to do that. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna key in my members' information. One thing to note is that this join date should reflect a date in the past that the member joined your organization. This is especially relevant if you're backdating adding activities to your D4H account. If the join date is after the activity date, it will not allow you to add this member as an attendee. Designate the appropriate status for this member. These statuses can also be customized within the team settings. I will show you that in a minute. This status field allows for specific functionalities within the D4H system. It also will place each member into their applicable tab category. For more information, check out the Help Center on these statuses. I'm going to fill in the rest of my details for this member. If you add any phone numbers, be sure to enter them in international format with no symbols. You may scroll to the right for more fields to enter in additional pieces of information. Once you're done, click on Import All Members. Step one is adding your members. This allows you to track your membership details, including qualifications, attendance hours, etc. Step two would be granting that member access to sign into your D4H account. Let's do that step next. First, I'm gonna go ahead and find Robert Williams, who am I just added to the account. You can do so by again, going to members under planning. You can also go back to access control, or you can type in their name at the top and select their name. This is Robert Williams profile. If I needed to update any details on his profile, I'd simply click on update details at the top right. To grant access, I'll click on manage access. Next, I'm gonna select the permission level that I wish to grant Robert. Permission levels are what allow the members to do specific functions within the D4H account. For more information on these permission levels, be sure to check out the Help Center article. For Robert Williams, I'm gonna select Member Plus, allowing him to draft incident activities, exercise activities, drafting event activities, and I'm gonna give him the equipment editor. Once you're done, simply click on send invite at the bottom right hand side. From the access control screen, you can see that Robert Williams has been sent an invitation to join the D4H account. It's very important to note that those invitations expire after 24 hours. So that may require you to come back in here and resend an invitation if it's been beyond the 24 hours. Let's backtrack a minute and talk about the customization of member statuses. Come over here to the user icon at the top right and access team settings. From here, scroll down to the members module. And this is where you can customize the labels for each status. When you're done, simply click on save changes at the bottom right. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this brief video. Continue in the series to watch the remaining videos. If you ever have any questions, feel free to reach out to us at help at d4h.com. We're here to assist. Hey everyone, it's GP here from the D4H customers team. 
we are back with the equipment management video series in this video we are going to be looking at how to add an equipment category kind edit their names and also looking at how to merge them as well when it comes to the equipment categories it may vary based on your inventory for an example we have a help article that will help you how to define equipment categories in your account to create a new equipment category in your account go to the logistics tab at the top and click into equipment from this page click into the categories tab if you do not see add category option at the top that means you do not have the correct permission levels to create new equipment in your account simply touch base with your account administrator who can enhance your access level in order to add and edit equipment in your inventory you must have equipment editor granular permission level or editor or an account owner access level once you come to this page simply click into add category here the system will ask you to enter the name of the category once you have added the category title simply click into create category you will then be able to see the category that was just created next let's take a look at how we can go about kinds when it comes to a kind consider it as a secondary level to the category here you will find a few examples of kinds that we suggest to our customers to use based on the equipment inventory that you own next let's take a look at how we can go about creating a new kind under the category that was just created simply click into the add kind option here the system will request for additional information with regards to the kind that we are going to be adding once you have added the title of your kind you will be given the option to change the category if you would like to select the type of kind that you are going to be uh, adding items under and then if you would like to define costing at the kind level you can do that from here as well once the values have been entered simply click into create kind this will create the kind in your account and you will be able to change its name you have the option to delete it and also you can merge this kind with another kind in your account next let's take a look at how we can go about adding new items to our inventory i'll see you there hey folks in this video we are going to be looking at how to add new items to our inventory change its details and duplicate them as well let's jump in from here you can simply click into the zero over here it will then take you to the kind that was created in your account you can click into the add item at the top here the system will auto populate a unique reference number for your inventory but of course you have the option to change this reference number as well you will also be given a couple of options to choose from if you're only looking to add a single item you can click into quick add it will simply add this item using the reference number that was given if you are looking to add additional information to the item you can click into create item in this example we are going to be clicking into create item then the system will give you a confirmation saying the equipment item was created you have the option to add additional information to your item starting from its location most likely your administrator has already created locations in your account simply click into the update location option and select your equipment item location the same applies for your manufacturer information as well you can either select an existing manufacturer or create a brand new one as well you will also notice that you have the option to add a barcode as well if this item has a barcode you can simply add that here 
or else you have the option of assigning a barcode using D4H equipment management mobile application or a handheld device as well and we have a dedicated help article on how you can go about it once all the information has been added to your item simply scroll to the bottom of this page and click into save changes this will save all the equipment information that was just added you'll be able to double check from this view as well when it comes to duplicating items simply open the item that you're looking to duplicate and then click into duplicate item then the system will request how many duplicates you would like to create simply add in the number and click into create items a quick note here before you duplicate an item always make sure the original item contains all the required fields such as location data manufacturer information model information expiry date manufacture date etc that will make sure that once the items have been duplicated you do not need to go into individual item and then change them individually thank you for watching the video let's meet on another equipment management video by d4h customer steve bye for now hello marie hunt here with the d4h customers team in this video today we're going to talk about equipment locations equipment locations allow you to isolate your equipment in specified storage locations it's important to note that equipment locations should be non-movable permanent structures such as a warehouse storage room or vehicle bay in this video we're going to talk about how to add locations and update locations we're also going to talk about how to move the equipment items that you already have in your account to these locations both in the web version as well as the mobile application let's get started from my equipment dashboard i'm going to go ahead and i'm going to select locations first i'm going to go ahead and i'm going to add a location it's important to note that if you do not see add location from this screen you do not have the proper permission in order to make these changes in your d4h account go ahead and get in touch with your d4h administrator to discuss your permission levels as well as update those permission levels to more elevated permissions. To add location, I'm gonna simply click on add location on the right hand side. I'm gonna key in the relevant information for this location. So I gave the location a title, it's storage room 50. I bundled this location in my emergency management operations building. Bundling will group like locations together for ease of use. I gave this building a description as well as specified the location but if i ever needed to update the location i'd simply click and type in the address here under the search bar or i could drag and drop the pin to another specified location noting that you can zoom in for a higher visibility of where you're locating it once you're done click on save changes at the bottom right great now that we went ahead and added this location let's say i wanted to update this location's details First, I would locate this location under the Locations tab, and then I would select Update Details on the far right-hand corner, updating the details within this location, and then again clicking Save Changes. There are two ways in order to add items of equipment to this specified location. You can create new items by selecting Add Item here, and it would be like adding a brand new piece of equipment or you can move pre-existing items that you already have in your account to this location. This move items button allows you to bulk move pieces of equipment to this location. Let's do that now. From this page, there are many different ways to move items to this location. The first way is by finding the item. For this example, this item currently has no location, so I'm going to expand no location, find the piece of equipment, either click on add here or I can drag and drop it to the right hand side column underneath select it. Now I'm going to continue to load in my individual items to the right hand side column. The other way to find a piece of equipment is by utilizing the barcode feature. If this is not yet enabled for your D4H account, go ahead and contact your D4H administrator. This is a really great way to find pieces of equipment fast and easy. 
The third way to find a piece of equipment is by typing in here to filter it out. Once I type in any of the keywords, I can start dragging and dropping the applicable items to the right hand side column. Once I have all the items that I'm set to bulk move to this new location, I'm going to select move selected equipment. From this pop up underneath this no location drop down, I'm going to go ahead and select that storage room 50. And I'm going to select move. Now all of those items have been bulk moved to that storage room 50 location. Next, let's go ahead and take a look how to do this in the mobile application. There are several ways to locate a piece of equipment within the equipment management mobile app. You can do so by accessing the more options menu at the top left, locating the piece of equipment within its applicable category and kind, then move the piece of equipment to its location. The alternative way to locate a piece of equipment is by utilizing the search feature within the D4H equipment management mobile application. You can type in keywords or phrases like the category or kind, or the equipment items reference number. Once you locate it, you'll select move item again, pick its applicable location, and then move the item. Equipment locations can only be added and updated within the web version. Once again, barcoding is a great way to locate a piece of equipment with ease. It allows you to use your device's camera in order to scan the barcode and move that item to its new location. Thanks again for taking the time to watch this brief video. Continue on in the series or reach out to us if you have any tips or suggestions for new content. Thank you. Hello again, Marie Hunt here with the D4H customers team. In this video, we're going to talk about consumable items in your inventory. Specifically, we're going to discuss how to set thresholds on those supply levels. In addition, we'll discuss how to distribute those consumable items as well. Let's get started. First, you're going to want to locate your equipment dashboard. On the topic of setting thresholds for your consumable items, here within my dashboard on the overview tab, I have this low supply level widget. This enables me to see when I've reached a deficit and I need to order new supplies. From my screen, you can see that I'm in a deficit of five from my oxygen bottles, and I'm currently in a deficit of 25 for my suits. To set these threshold requirements on my consumables, I can do so two ways. I can select the supply levels tab at the top, or I can click within the actual title of my supply level widget. Let's take a look at what I currently have set up in my account. These columns here allow you to see what the current quantity is of your consumables, and on the right hand side, what the required thresholds are currently set. To update or set these required levels, I'm going to click on required levels at the top right. If you do not currently see required levels within your D4H account, please reach out to your D4H administrator. This is likely due to your permission levels that have been set. Within this screen is where I can update the required level number here in this column. If you wanted to add new kinds and set those levels, you'd simply click on add another kind. From the drop down, select update the number and then click on save changes at the bottom right. Now I can see where I need to order more consumable items. Next, let's take a look at distributing quantities of consumables. Again, from the supply levels tab here at the top, I have this distribute quantities on the right hand side. I'm going to select that. In order to start distributing items, I need to first select the kind of item. Once I select the kind, I then have a source column and a destination column. The source column is the source of the consumable, the current item in which you're taking from to send it to the new destination, its new item. From this source column, I can do this two different ways. I can take from an existing item or I can select new. What that would do is it would create a new item for me. For my example, I'm going to take from item number 64. I currently have 20 items within this batch. Now I need to select the destination. There are two different destination types when it comes to moving consumables. Either I can create a new item or I can move the items from this existing item into another existing item. So as an example, if I had this box here of 20 items and I needed to send five items over to a new location, I could then come over here, distribute five items from the original one to the new item 
and click distribute quantities. Now I only have 15 in the original item and I have 10 in where I sent it to. What this enables you to do is let's say that this item number 64 was in my warehouse, but this item 115 was set at a different location. I'm essentially taking items from the warehouse and then sending it over to a new location. Let's try this the alternative way for a different destination. So I'm going to take from item number 64, I'm actually gonna be creating a new item and I'm gonna move five. I can also select no location, change its location from this dropdown and select choose location. Once I click distribute quantities, it's going to take the five and move it to the bay floor. Now I have sent five of those consumables to the bay floor. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this brief video. In this video, we are going to be looking at how to go about adding a profile picture to your items and also look at how you can merge manufacturers and models in your account. When it comes to uploading a profile image to an item in your inventory, there are two ways that you can go about. If you only have one item in your inventory, what you can do is that open that item and then click into the profile photo at the top. This will open up the upload option and from here select your picture. Once you have selected the picture, click into upload files. And once that is complete, you'll be able to see the profile picture that was added to the item. The second option is something that you can consider if you have more items in your account from the same manufacturer or the model. Let's take a look into that one. For that, head over to the team setting option at the top and locate the manufacturer and model section under your equipment section. From here, the system will display all the manufacturers and the models that have been defined in your account. In this example, let's expand the Ford manufacturer. Then let's click into the quantity number next to the model name. It will take you to a page and it will display all the trucks that have been classified under the manufacturer of Ford and the model F350. From this page, click into the no model photo. It will open the upload option and from here select the image that you're looking to upload. Now the system has uploaded the image and it has linked to each and every truck that you have added as manufacturer fold and the model name F350. Now if you were to add a brand new item under the model name F350 system will ensure that it contains a profile image that you have uploaded. Let's take a look at how you can go about editing manufacturer and model names and also how to go about merging them as well. For that, simply head over to the team settings option at the top. From here, go to the equipment section and click into manufacturers. If you go across a manufacturer name, you will be given an option to edit the name of the manufacturer. You can also add a brand new model from here. And also system will give you an option to merge this manufacturer with another manufacturer in your account. If you now go into the models that you have in the account, you will notice that the system gives you an option to edit the name of the model. And also it gives you an option to merge this specific model with another model in your account. However, the delete option is invisible or it is hidden to you. It's because there are items inside this specific uh, model. Thank you for watching the video and I'll see you on another video. Hey everyone, it's GP here from the D4H customers team. On this video, we are going to be looking at how you can create an equipment inspections using the new inspections steps feature. Let's dive in.
from your D4H team manager account, go to the logistics tab and click into equipment. From here, then click into the inspections tab. If you do not see this option, please connect with your account administrator who can enhance your access level. Then click into add inspection. From here, type in the title of your inspection. And if you're looking to bundle this inspection with a few other inspections, simply add your bundle name as well. And then click into add inspection. The system will then create the inspection in your account. Simply locate the inspection and open it up. From here, click into update details. The system will now display all the settings related to your inspection. From here, start adding your inspection steps by simply clicking into add step. Once you've added the inspection step details, click into save and then Click into add step to add the additional inspection steps related to your equipment inspection. If you would like to add additional information with regards to your equipment inspections, you can add that information under the description field. And then select the frequency that you would like to carry out the inspection. And after that, you can select when you would like the system to send you a reminder of this inspection. And if you would like to mark the items as auto unserviceable, you can enable that option. Next, you would need to define what type of equipment that needs to be covered as part of this inspection. You also have the option to add multiple kinds of equipment to your inspection. Once you have added all the items that are required for your inspection, ensure it is marked as active and system will also display the list of items that are going to be covered as part of your inspection. Finally, go to the bottom right hand corner and click into save changes. The system will now display the inspection that you just created with the confirmation at the top and at the bottom you can see all the items that are covered as part of your inspection. If you have a larger list of inspection items on your weave, you have the option to scan the QR code or the barcode that you have linked to these items. You can also search from this filter option and lastly you have the option to filter based on the locations of your account as well. When you're looking to conduct an inspection, go ahead and open up that inspection. System will display all the items that are going to be covered as part of that inspection. All you have to do, simply click into inspect now. Based on the inspections that you have created in the account, you have the option to either pass or fail your inspection step or if the inspection step is not applicable you can simply mark NA as well. A key note here is that if you have marked at least one inspection step as failed system will not let you pass the entire inspection. If we take an example if I pass the first three steps and mark the last inspection step as failed, you will notice that the system hides the pass option for me. But if I go ahead and check mark or pass the last step as well, it is now going to allow me to pass the entire inspection. You also have a few advanced options as well. If you open that up, you have the option to add any additional details to your inspection. If you would like to add a repair for the entire inspection, if you are looking to change the item status, you can do that from here. You have the option to add attachments as well. And if you are looking to override the date of inspection completion, you can do that from the bottom over here. Lastly, at any point in time, if you would like to save the inspection status, you can click into save later or if you go back out of the 
inspection page it will automatically save your inspection progress as well let's head over to the d4h equipment mobile application and see how you can go about carrying out an inspection using the mobile app the d4h equipment mobile application is going to be available for both ios as well as for the android users when it comes to looking up an equipment inspection you can simply search it from the search menu at the top right hand corner or you can open it up using the menu bar on the top left hand corner of your screen once you have opened the equipment item where you would like to conduct the equipment inspection simply go over the inspection steps that you have added to the inspection and start marking the inspection step status just like on the web browser if you do not mark each and every inspection step as passed system will not allow you to pass the overall inspection and just like on the web application you have the option to add additional notes upload any attachments or even add any repair notes as well from this view the cool thing here is that the system is going to save each and every change you're making to this inspection that means if you ever need to leave the inspection or if you get a call on the phone your changes have been saved and when you go back to the inspection you can start where you left off once you have gone through all the inspection steps and marked them as passed you have the option to pass the inspection when you do that the system will give you a confirmation saying the results have been updated you can also see the inspection outcome and the status of the inspection steps that you marked thank you so much for taking the time to watch our new inspection steps video we hope to see you on another video really soon hello again marie hunt here with the d4h customers team in this video we're going to talk about completing repairs Repairs can be completed both in the web version as well as the mobile application for equipment management. Repairs can also be assigned to members on your team. Once a repair is assigned to a member on your team, they will receive a notification via email to complete the repair. You're also able to track which activity caused the item to require a repair, meaning if the piece of equipment was used on a training exercise and thus needed a repair after that training exercise, you can track against by using caused on activity within the repair. Let's jump into the web application now to take a look at completing repairs there. Now that I'm in the web application and have navigated to my equipment dashboard, I'm gonna go ahead and select the repair that is listed over here under my repairs widget that is assigned to me. This repair section under the overview tab for equipment management will showcase any repairs that are due for the entire account on this first column header any that are due immediately, meaning due today or in the past. And this last one is any repairs that are assigned directly to me. You can click directly into any of these to display more information. Let's go ahead and jump into this repair that's assigned to me. Once I've opened up the repair, I can mark the repair as in progress or I can mark it as completed. If you mark it as completed, please note it will no longer show up on your overview tab as due. I can also update details on the top right hand corner if I want to make any adjustments, but please note, depending on what your permission level is, you may not be able to see update details at the top right. Check with your D4H administrator to see what your permission levels are. If you do have the permission to update details, you can simply update the details in here. You could link it to that activity that it was caused on. You can also attach repair information as well as a funding source and then click Save Changes. Once the repair is complete, all you need to do is click on this completed box at the top right. You can also scroll down and add any repair attachments, meaning a bill that you received for this repair, or if you wanted to upload any images for the repair. You can also take a look at any historical repairs by coming over here to this right column and clicking on any of the applicable options. Thank you for taking the time to watch this brief video. Continue on in the series or take a look at one of our other video series within our YouTube channel. Thank you. Hello, Marie Hunt here with the D4H customers team. 
Welcome back to another video in the Equipment Management Admin User Series. In this video, we're going to take a look at some equipment management settings and how you can update them within your account. Let's go ahead and jump right into the Team Settings area. You'll access your user icon at the top right and click on Team Settings. It's important to note that if you do not see the team settings we will be discussing in this video today, it's likely due to your permission levels. Please reach out to your D4H administrator for more information. Once you've accessed team settings, go ahead and scroll down to the equipment section. First, let's take a look at the basic equipment settings. Within this equipment setting, you have the ability to turn on and off specific modules within your equipment management account. There are several other default settings in here including what type of barcoding you'd like to utilize if you're going to be taking advantage of the barcoding feature. Take a look at the Help Center article for more information on how to set this up. This activity usage setting allows you to enable if all contents of a piece of equipment would be included in an activity. As an example, if you have a vehicle that you're tracking being used uh, in one of your activities and you want to include all of the vehicle's contents, you have to make sure that this is enabled within your equipment settings. Here, you're able to update your account's default notification for expired items. Under labels, you have the option of customizing the label for each one of the statuses of all of your pieces of equipment. Back under team settings, underneath the equipment section, the next three categories and kinds, manufacturers and suppliers, allows you to make the edits directly in the team settings. Meaning if you needed to update a category or kind, you needed to merge two different manufacturers and models together, you're able to do that directly from team settings. Check out the associated Help Center article for more information. It may be important for your organization to track when a piece of equipment is no longer in your inventory. If you want to mark the piece of equipment as retired, you have the ability to create sub custom reasons that the piece of equipment is no longer in your inventory under the retirement reason. You would simply click on add retired reason, key in the retired reason and save changes at the bottom right. Another equipment setting I wanted to highlight is the ability to delegate who's receiving the equipment management notifications via email for your account. Within team settings, if you scroll down to emails and notifications, then select equipment alerts. Here I'm able to designate who as a user within my D4H account is going to receive notifications for expired pieces of equipment and any inspections that are due for the account. I could simply search for the person's name and select them underneath any of the applicable location options. Once you're done, you'd simply scroll down and click on save changes. Thank you for taking the time to watch this brief video. For more videos or other video series, please check out and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Hey, hey everyone, it's GP here from D4H. This is going to be the last video that we are going to be doing on the equipment management video series for the admin users. In this video, we are going to be looking at how to create custom reports for the equipment that you have in the account. To do that, click into the intelligence tab at the top and go to the reports. This will open our custom reports feature. And from here, click into create new report. From the custom report dropdown, select equipment items and then start filling the information based on your search criteria. Let's say for example, I am looking to generate all the equipments in my account. I would come in here and I would mark the expiry date as any and I would run the report. This will show me all the equipment that I have in the account. And if I'm looking to download a CSV file of the report, I can do that from the download as spreadsheet feature at the top. And then if I'm looking to save this custom report for future references, I can do that by simply clicking into the save custom report at the bottom of this page. It will ask you to add a report title. Once you have added the report title, go ahead and save the report. You will then be taken into the report that you just saved and if you were to click into the update details of that report you can go in and set certain criteria from here you can set the email delivery criteria if i am to enable the email delivery function i can set the frequency 
I can set the date where as to when it should send the next email. From here, I can select who I should send this email to. You can also add none D4H members email addresses if you would like this specific report to be emailed. And also you can attach the CSV file as part of the email. At the bottom, you are able to set API delivery as well. Once you have made the changes, make sure you go ahead and save the details from the bottom right hand corner. Once the changes have been saved, the system will give you a notification. And if you now go into your main reports window, it will display all the custom reports that you have created in the account. So next time, if you want to run the same exact report, all you got to do, come into your custom reports view and then click into the specific custom report, set your dates, which is the duration and click into go, which will generate the report for you. And you can also download the spreadsheet. This concludes our equipment management video series for the admin users. As always, thank you so much for your time. Have a nice day.